Hello there! A blog post, controversially entitled Please Commit More Blatant Academic Fraud, has been making waves in the machine learning slash AI community on Twitter and Reddit, especially because it is the cry of a fellow PhD student you know, not a renowned professor or anything, Miss Coffee Bean proposed to give this blog post a read and to comment on it in this video. So what is this all about? The blog post starts directly with mentioning what even triggered its writing. It is this viewpoint by a renowned personality in the machine learning community, Professor Michael L. Littman. This piece is reporting about the method of cheating the peer review called collusion rings. And bear with Miss Coffee Bean because we know that you know that peer review is broken. But this is like organized fraud. It's the collusion ring mafia breaking the already broken review system. Okay, so what's the deal? How does this work? Pay close attention because this is so intricate that Miss Coffee Bean honestly wonders how somebody can even come up with this. Well, it's smart people working in AI after all. The scheme works like this. First, a group of colluding authors. You're not a native English speaker, Miss Coffee Bean, are you? Collusion, secret or illegal cooperation or conspiracy in order to deceive others. So we're on that level now. Okay. So a group of colluding authors writes and submits papers to a conference. That's something even non-crooked authors would do. But then they share amongst themselves the title of the papers, which is against the rules because it ruins anonymity in peer reviewing. Then these colluders hide their conflict of interest. So they hide anything that could tell a meta reviewer that they might know the other authors. <laughs> How? Well, with duplicate accounts. And interestingly enough, there was no way to tell these are fake accounts. Well, not really. Not in a field growing and growing like machine learning does currently. Exponentially. So the collusion ring fellowship bids for the papers, which means that in the phase where the reviewers can tell which papers they would like to review, they choose the papers from their collusion ring fellowship. And hopefully they get the papers of their fellows, write positive reviews to them and even lobby through back channels to change the opinions of other reviewers. Or send threats if others feel like something is fishy. Wow. And the most crazy part is this scheme seemed to work in this discovered case, but who knows how many cases go undetected. The viewpoint piece is not disclosing specific details, just to respect the fraudulent researchers and not disclose information that might identify them. Oh, it's anonymous peer review after all. But thinking how important conference acceptances are for anyone and especially for PhD students who do not have the safety of a professorship or tenure and need to find the next job after their PhD, it's no wonder it hit Jacob Buckman, who is a PhD student, so badly that it motivated him to write this blog post, which we finally come to discuss right now. Independently on whether you agree with him or not, you are free to form your own opinions. But we think we can all agree that this is a very grim viewpoint adopted here. His main point is that this example highlighted by Professor Littman might be one of the worst cases of fraud, but that there is a more mundane and day-to-day -day fraud that is happening regularly. But if the day-to-day -day fraud would be more blatant, like the fellowship of the collusion rings fraud we saw earlier, a change in the field's organization might come sooner because then everybody would see how wrong everything is and fight for a change. So what exactly is wrong in machine learning? Example of this day-to-day -day fraud are, we saw trying that shiny new algorithm out on a couple dozen seeds and then only reporting the best few. Well, <laughs> that's happening. For sure. Running a big hyperparameter sweep on your proposed approach but using the defaults for the baseline. Who even spend so much time tuning the baselines and some of the baselines are not even tunable because the code was not released or it's not working for some reason. Cherry picking examples where your model looks good or cherry picking whole data sets to test on where you've confirmed your model's advantage. Mm -hmm. Making up new problem settings, new data sets, new objectives 
objectives in order to claim victory on an empty playing field. Well, this one is a little against the goal of research and has been discussed on Twitter. And Miss Coffee Bean also thinks it's a little unfair because even if sometimes you don't see the impact of a new problem or application, there are people who genuinely need that. It's not necessarily that an author is creating a problem just for the sake of having one. Okay, then proclaiming that your work is a promising first step in your introduction despite being fully aware that nobody will ever build on it. <laughs> Submitting a paper to a conference because it's got a decent shot at acceptance and you don't want the time you spent on it to go to waste even though you've since realized that the core ideas aren't quite correct. This last point is very heavily weighing on PhD students with limited time to get to hold on to something. Especially if things are not going so well, there's a lot of pressure to still make a publication out of that. This is why Miss Coffee Bean salutes initiatives that highlight negative results in the field, like this one here, making it unnecessary to hide that results are bad and to mask them as actually good. Okay, so these are the problems and Jacob Buckman... Miss Coffee Bean, is this how the name is really pronounced. So Jacob writes that he, the even bigger problem is that these points are subtle and easy to dismiss by saying something like the hyperparameters were just forgotten or that something is just a bug. Therefore, nobody can propose hard punishments for this. And Miss Coffee Bean's rule of cheating says that if one does it, the next does it until most of people do it just to keep up with everybody who is cheating already. Okay, but the next point in the post is saying that everybody is complicit because nobody acknowledges the existence of this subtle fraud. And there are some reasons to this, especially those people benefiting from the current state of affairs do not want a new organization of things that's easy to understand. But this point falls rather short in the blog post, Miss Coffee Bean, doesn't it? Because this point implies a little that everybody knows about these problems. But do they? Here we might have to split between people who do know and people who don't. There are some examples of people who don't. My experience from teaching students at my university is that people are not born knowing about these problems, but they have to learn about them one by one, especially at bachelor's and even master's level. It is very common that research papers are read like the Bible. Things in it might be true if it stands in a paper. It was accepted at a conference. Somebody even formatted it nicely with LaTeX. <laughs> Critical thinking is something that one has to learn. Another group of people who do not know about the problems but have critical thinking are experienced researchers. Critical thinking applies only to their fields of expertise because on some topics they just don't know enough to even think critically. And you know, if you're just visiting a field or a topic, you will also not invest the time necessary to learn all things. You're just passing by. Okay, but even if Miss Coffee Bean does not agree with distributing the blame so widely, she does agree that there are not many people doing something effectively about these problems problems, even if there are some attempts at it. Some attempts were highlighted in this tweet by Anna Rogers, linked in the description below. Check it out. But what to do about these problems in the proposal of this blog post? Well, the proposal is to make academic fraud blatant, visible to everyone, but especially unacceptable so that one cannot merely stand aside doing nothing about it. Make blatant fraud, aggressive fraud, form more collusion rings like the ones we have seen in the beginning. This is the grim call of a PhD student and this has to be taken seriously. He even makes an analogy to chemotherapy, unpleasant but effective even if it destroys the field entirely. So Miss Coffee Bean's question is, do we want this to happen to the machine learning community? Do we want to kill it to hope it rises again but without all problems from before? Well. As someone originally from a country that has recently seen this kind of treatment in a bloody revolution, but where at the end all the old problems came back in a slightly different form, this time just dressed as capitalism instead of socialism, I am very distrustful that even if everybody would follow this advice, this would really cure the problems. Because who would follow this advice? <laughs> who would volunteer to make these blatant frauds? Anyone willing to put their academic integrity on the line? No? Anyone? 
Do not get us wrong here. I, as a fellow PhD student, love the revolutionary angry tone of this blog post. I feel with it. It is great that these topics come up as a discussion and here we cheer for Jacob who wrote it. But Miss Coffee Bean takes me down from my angry PhD frustrations and tells me to think more constructively and propose a solution that not only has a chance to work, but one that people are even willing to apply in the first place. So here it is, the long-awaited solution to all problems in machine learning publications, reviewing and the collusion ring cancer. Are you ready? Sorry, the broadcast was interrupted, just like during the Romanian Revolution in 1989. <laughs> That's the reference probably not many viewers will get. Sorry. Okay, Miss Coffee Bean has three proposals. They are not fully fleshed out. That might possibly become a future video. I don't know. Here they are in their current form. The first thing is education. As previously said, from my teaching experience, there is a lot of work needed to teach students and people in general that just because something is written in a conference format or is, I don't know, in a nice video, does not make it true. Critical thinking, also useful for reviewing, must be learned and practiced not taken for granted. And the best thing that could happen out of this is that critically thinking students will take over when the dinosaurs conducting science badly will disappear. We know it's a long time investment, nobody likes these. The second proposal is discussion. Putting these issues into the public view and to everyone's discussion exactly like this post does. Miss Coffee Bean loves how it highlights these subtle problems and puts them into broad daylight for people all around the world to discuss about this on Twitter or Reddit. And the final idea is in-depth and independent science journalism in machine learning. Writers, bloggers, or <clears throat> even people with YouTube channels to get monthly a random subset of all new publications to critically assess, publicly review, and simultaneously communicate to non-experts what the field is up to. The upside, even if not all publications from that month will fall into this random selective lottery, there is a chance that when an author publishes a paper, that paper will be randomly chosen for the public review process. It's enough of an incentive for the authors to make their paper waterproof, especially knowing that a well-known critic will say something about your paper. Of course, one has to take care that these public reviewers do not have any conflict of interest or that they have to be afraid that their own papers would get negative reviews. So what Miss Coffee Bean is imagining is this as a full-time job for them, like literary critics for novels or for poetry. And of course, these journalists slash reviewers should be well paid, perhaps by someone with a lot of money caring for a healthy and diverse field, to create perhaps a a common fund where any machine learning benefactor could contribute to. What do you think of this? Of course, these are just some suggestions Miss Coffee Bean thought of just now. So let's discuss. Write in the comments, tweet, or perhaps write a position paper for the next conference. How should we improve the state of publication in AI? Perhaps without killing it first, okay? So tell us what you do think. Miss Coffee Bean will devour your comments. Even if the state of machine learning academia is not healthy, we hope you are. Stay safe. Oh.